This little light of mine Going on the mission This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine Going on the mission Let it shine Shine Let it shine Everywhere I go Going on the mission Christ, light of the world, enlighten our hearts with love. Good morning and welcome once again to worship with United Parish in Brookline. We are so happy to welcome you this morning, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey. We welcome you as we know God welcomes you into this space that we create together, this sacred space online as we can, will continue to do throughout the summer. Here at United Parish, we like to say we are at the very least American Baptist, United Church of Christ, United Methodist, and a whole lot more. We invite you this morning to participate in worship by using the chat on the side of your screen. You can use this to greet one another, to pass the peace, to lift up prayer requests. Just keep in mind that the chat is public. There's also uh, three links in the video description below. There is one for our virtual visitor card. So if you are new to worshiping with us, we invite you to fill this out so that we can reach out to you during the week and welcome you more fully into our community. There is a link for how you can contribute to this morning's offering collection. And there is a link for our order of worship that you can follow along with. There's also actually a link for how you can sign up to be a liturgist to uh, contribute your voice to worship through offering invitations or scripture reading. 
We'd love to have members of our congregation of this community participate in worship and the adventure of recording, which we will guide you through. To tell you, for this particular uh, worship, I am not going to be part of the chat today because I'm actually at a contemplative prayer retreat on Sunday, but I encourage you to participate. Uh, I will be back following week, and this week Amy is going to be away. I will be uh, attending General Synod virtually with my cohort in the Next Generation Leadership Initiative, which is a program through the United Church of Christ. For now, we invite you to sink into the goodness of God to bring whatever you need to bring into this worship time so that you and God can work it out together in the presence of community, and also to leave out those things that are distracting to you and really just try to be here present together. We're so glad you came. This morning we will be hearing from our beloved Chad and Kendra Moore offering us our morning reflection and homily um, also, we will be later on, we'll be blessing them as they prepare for their move to Kansas to begin a new chapter. Uh, I invite you to stay tuned and to hear just the wisdom that flows out of these two wonderful, wonderful members. For now, I invite you to take a deep breath, to settle a little more deeply in your seat as we go to God for our centering prayers. You, O oh God, love us from the moment of our conception. You know us and you love us in the womb. You love us and you call us from before the moment of our first breath. And you love us when we first see the light of day. As a parent loves their child before they ever see them and then embraces them gently from the moment of their birth, so you love us and we thank you. Help us, dear God, to love one another in this way. O oh God, hear our prayer. You love us, O oh God, from the time of our naming. You love us in our growing and hold us as we take our first steps. You love us and walk beside us as we explore the world with eager hands and eyes. As a parent loves their child as they see them grow and develop, so you love us, and we thank you. Help us, dear God, to love one another in this way. O oh God, hear our prayer. You love us, O oh God, as we mature and seek our way. You love us as we become aware of the world around us. You love us as we smile and play. You will even love us when we say no and when we begin to stray. As a parent loves their child as they see them become proud and tall, so you love us even when we sin and fall. Help us, dear God, to love one another in this way. O oh God, hear our prayer. We thank you, God, for loving us when we are unloving, for caring for us when we are uncaring, and for calling to us when we go far away. Help us, dear God, to love one another in this way. O oh God, hear our prayer. God, hear our prayers of love this day for those around us, for those we have held before you in our time of sharing, for those we have thought of in our moments of caring. We lift these prayers up to you, O oh God. Hear our prayer. We ask all of these things in the name of Christ Jesus, who is our constant companion, our savior and our everlasting friend. Pray all this and one thing more. For as Christ taught us, we are bold to pray together. Our creator in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now by siblings, my sisters, and my brothers, I invite you to rise in spirit or in body for some good news. The good news is that whoever you are, wherever you are on this life journey or your faith journey, God loves you. God always has loved you and always will. God is always there to welcome you back more closely into relationship no matter what has happened in the past. God is always there saying, you are my beloved child. I want to be in relationship with you. I am here for you. If you believe in this kind of love and forgiveness a little bit, or if you believe it with your whole soul, or if you are just trying to believe it to get through today, I invite you to say amen. Confident in God's love and forgiveness, we are invited to share it wherever we go, and we start here and now with a holy greeting. The peace of Christ and the love of God be with you always. Let us greet one another in holy ways. Peace, everyone. First John 4, 7 through 18. Dear friends, let us love one another, because love comes from God. Whoever loves is a child of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. And God showed their love for us by sending their only Son into the world so that we might have life through him. This is what love is. It is not that we have loved God, but that God loved us and sent their Son to be the means by which our sins are forgiven. Dear friends, if this is how God loved us, then we should love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in union with us, and their love is made perfect in us. We are sure that we live in union with God, and that they live in union with us, because He has given us their Spirit. And we ourselves know and believe the love which God has for us. God is love, and those who live in love live in union with God, and God lives in union with them. Love is made perfect in us in order that we may have courage on the judgment day, and we will have it because our life in this world is the same as Christ's. There is no fear in love. Perfect love drives out all fear. So then, love has not been made perfect in anyone who is afraid, because fear has to do with punishment. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God in spirit, for the word of God among us. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Let us pray. God of love who lives around us, among us, and within us, we offer ourselves to you now as we seek to have a holy conversation. We ask that the words of our mouths and the meditations of all our hearts may be truly acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer, and let the people say amen. It's good to be with Chad and Kendra today and to have a little holy conversation um, rooted in the scripture from the first letter of John about love, God's love, agape, as it's known in Greek. And um, Chad and Kendra, you actually chose this scripture. Could you just say a little bit more about what the scripture means to you? Yeah, I think, you know, when I think about this scripture and thinking back on, on, on choosing something to root our conversation today, I, I thought about a moment I had in undergrad, which in many ways was a, a launching point to how Kendra and I ever ended up in Boston in the first place, which was having some kind of debate in a class on the Hebrew Bible with one of our favorite undergraduate professors and people going back and forth about inane points of theology or Old Testament archaeology or what, what any of this means. And, and at some point, our professor stopped the conversation and in a sort of provocative way that he was very good at, just asked the pointed question and said, you know, as Christians, 
do you think it is more important to be right or to be loving? And reflecting on that question, you know, also there is a, a bit of mischievousness in it because in many ways, maybe they're not different. Um, and I think that this, this verse and this section kind of makes that argument that the point of this isn't to be correct. It's not to uh, lord intellectual power over people. It's not about that. It's not really about being right in some ways. It's about being loving. It's about a certain kind of community, a certain ethic of care, a certain sense of responsibility towards one another. Um, and I see that theology that's developed throughout you know, Christian tradition and Christian history starting here in these early conversations amongst the church, thinking about how do we know who is a member of our community? And it's not that they profess any certain thing, but it's that they do a certain set of actions rooted in a certain type of care. Yeah, and I, I would um, add on to that, that for me, I, I, I think so many conversations about um, like love just can feel very fluffy and like unrooted. And, but this passage, I think, like after being a part of United Parish for these last several years, um, it's like th this community has just exemplified like uh, the least fluffy version, I think, uh, of, 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 of what love is supposed to look like. And so it just, um, it gives me a new appreciation for verses that are, you know, talking about like, oh yeah, like love, love everybody, love your neighbor. And, and in moments in the past when I felt like that feels easy to say, but like, what does that mean? I think that um, the, the congregation of United Parish has shown me over and over again, like what that looks like and how sometimes it's messy. And it's not that people, um, you know, have figured out their, like this perfect theology of love, but um, like UP shows up and is willing to do the work. And it has been um, just like a great honor to, to see that in a, a church community and to be part of that and to um, just constantly be reminded of, of what, like, what that kind of love can actually look like in action rather than just being like a fluffy word on a page. So. Nice. Thank you. So many of you listening uh, are familiar with Chad and Kendra. They came here in my first year as pastor here in late 2014 from Texas mm -hmm. to start their uh, Master of Theological Studies at BU, Boston University School of Theology. And we were blessed that they chose us as their local church. Um, and uh, they are now moving on. They are actually currently in Worcester. They've been at uh, Holy Cross, where they've been working in residential life, but they are headed to Bethany College in Lindsborg, Kansas, mm -hmm. where Kendra is going to be a professor of New Testament studies. Is that correct? Is it? Uh, professor of religion, not New Testament, uh, but it'll be a lot of like uh, intro to religion, psychology of religion, stuff like that. It's a small school, though, so she'll you probably. End I, I up might at end some up point, doing but, that. Yeah. <laughs> And Chad is gonna be uh, working with the Student Affairs Office in helping people find their path to purpose. Yeah, so we'll be, we're, we're launching a new program rooted in the mission of the college and kind of a revamping of the mission of the college to really think about both the responsibility of a liberal arts education to and a liberal arts institution to make sure that students are discovering a sense of meaning and purpose and beauty in a robust sense in the world, but also ensuring that 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 process of discovery is gonna to lead to uh, employment where they can pay back their student loans and, and trying to think about both the practical and the philosophical elements of this together in one office and one program. And I'll get to work with the, the college president and, and the administrative team to do that. So, so really excited about it. Um, yeah, it, it's kind of an open slate right now. We'll see what happens. Excellent. Many congratulations to you both and congratulations to Bethany for having the good sense to bring you on board. Um, <laughs> and many of you know why we've been so blessed to have Kendra and Chad in our midst. Uh, they have been active members, very active in our 20s, 30s group, 
um, seeing it through many transitions. They have also uh, been worship leaders on many occasions. They've taught in church school. Um, they've been a part of our justice efforts and many other uh, ways that you have engaged and gotten to know our community and our community's gotten to know you. And I, I'm curious because I know you both came from a more conservative take on Christianity, one which I'm familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, and United Parish was a different kind of church than many that you've been a part of before. And I also realized it was sort of uh, in complement to your studies at Boston University School of Theology. One of the things we're reflecting on this summer is our anniversary theme of how we're rooted in our past and reaching into our future. And I'm curious how you found that United Parish rooted you and also what it's encouraged you to reach for. I think for me, uh, one of the most important uh, rooting aspects of my experience at UP is that I, I always felt like I could breathe whenever I went to, uh, you know, whatever Sunday service or midweek service. Um, I never had to worry about showing up and like not, even if I wasn't feeling fully present, um, I knew that I would still be welcomed fully um, in a way that at, at the point that I have been in my life these last several years, just trying to figure out a lot of things personally and professionally, I could imagine many different situations and many different kinds of church congregations where it would be uh, very difficult to show up um, in the state that I <laughs> had been in and feel like I was um, welcomed or fully part of the community. And there have been many times where I felt guilty, like, oh, I, I should, I wish that I had given more. I wish I had done more um, for UP in these last several years. Um, despite my like exhaustion <laughs> in grad school, but no one, uh, no one has ever made me feel like I didn't like deserve to be uh, sitting there with everyone on a Sunday morning um, or whatever. And so I think that that's a really special um, experience to feel like you can, you can be, and you don't have to have things figured out. And, you know, sometimes I would show up and feel like I didn't have much capacity to even really think. <laughs> I just was sitting there singing, listening, um, you know, greeting people, um, but feeling very tired. And I think that had I not um, been a part of United Parish, um, it, I, I can imagine myself uh, having maybe come to a point where I wouldn't have wanted to be part of a church community anymore. And that was something that I always um, was sort of wrestling with, but never, I just always felt like an overwhelming welcome and love um, from everyone in United Parish that has always like kept me tethered in a way that sometimes I think I even like tried to resist, <laughs> but uh, it just was, it, it's been a, a beautiful thing to experience. Yeah, I think both of us, you know, being after we finished the master's programs, we, we started PhD programs at BU, which was why we were so excited to get to stay around and to be a part of UP longer. But at the same time, it's been, you know, exhausting as any, any doctoral program is. And, and at times we felt thin and, and stretched and wanted to be a part of UP in a deeper way. And that, that our ability to do that kind of ebbed and flowed throughout the year. There were times where we could really sink in and times where we needed to pull back a little bit. But throughout all of that, the overwhelming feeling that we had anytime we were at UP, anytime we were with folks from UP, anytime we got to, you know, march in the street together or sit quietly in the dark at the end of the Good Friday service together uh, was an overwhelming feeling of grace in action. And, and I think for, for us, that kept us coming back. And, and I think many of the communities that we had been a part of before this, especially Christian communities, growing up in, you know, fundamentalist Baptist Texas, were rooted in guilt. The, the primary motivating factor to try and keep people a member of the community was, was guilt and a little bit of fear. And at United Parish, that has not been our experience. And, and the, the overwhelming sense that I get 
not only from 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 Kent and from Amy and from the leadership, but from the 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 community and the parishioners and the folks who have been here since birth and been here for decades now, is a sense of grace and a sense of curiosity, um, and that those are the two driving things. And so that even when you know we we came back to the community from a period where we had just been overwhelmed, um, we're welcomed back in and and plugged right back into whatever was going on at the church. And so I, I think coming from a Christianity rooted in fear and guilt, where my primary objective was to avoid a, eternal punishment, <laughs> move it, you know, we, we knew we wanted to get away from that. We had lost all interest in any, any sense that this was a, a worthwhile uh, thing to be engaged in when we came to Boston that we found a community rooted in grace and curiosity um, that was far more interested in how our theology impacts our neighbors and ourselves and our communities rather than inane points of, um, you know, little theological minutia here and there. We were more concerned with how does this make us better and more loving and more caring as a community. And those being the driving, the driving sense of the, of the church mm -hmm. that we encountered, which kept us coming back. And so in many ways it's rooted us, not only in our, our Christian heritage and tradition, but also given us a platform and an example of how to move forward in that way in the mess that is contemporary life and trying to make a living in the city of Boston. Um, yeah. You know, what you were saying, Chad, just reminds me of that last verse from John that we heard that you all read, which is, there is no fear in love. Perfect love drives out all fear. And that love has to do with saving us and fear has to do with punishment. Yeah, I think, I, I think we both, you know, sort of independently at, around the time we were getting married and dating more seriously, had the realization that the primary driver <laughs> that had rooted us in Christianity for so long wasn't love of God or love of neighbor, but was fear of hell. Mm -hmm. And that leads to a really different orientation towards the world, a really different set of skills that you cultivate and habits you build, habits of avoidance rather than engagement, habits of judgment rather than humility. Um, and it changes the way you see yeah. community too, like mm -hmm. the meaning of community. I to an extent that I didn't realize until we were at UP. Yeah, and and we knew we needed something different, but we didn't actually know what it looked like in the real world, or mm -hmm. or yeah, or how to build something like that. And and UP has been that for us. Um, and yeah, and it's 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 why it's been such a special place. And yeah, that's why I say Amen and thanks be to God. You, and Kendra, you had also mentioned something to me, and maybe you touched on it a bit just a moment ago, but you sent to me an email that in many ways you felt like United Parish had saved Christianity for you. And I wonder if there's anything you would add to what you all have said so far about that. Yeah, I think that, um, and yeah, it's, I feel like I started to touch on it, but didn't go too deep into it. But I think that um, I, the collective, the, the, the collectiveness, I guess, of, um, the UP community and just, I think like it's the most intergenerational church that we've ever been a part of. It's a church that's so much more oriented towards social justice than past church experiences for us. Like all of these things that really dig into community beyond um, like breaking bread with one another, which is like, of course, still important and really beautiful. But like, I think that being a part of a church community that expanded my experience of what community can be and can feel like, it made me feel uh, safer or, or um, yeah, maybe like safe is one way to put it or um, just accepted in a way that whenever I several years ago, I guess, like maybe even before we moved to Boston, around the time that a lot of my own theological notions of what, um, what God is or what community is or what love is, when 
my uh, notions of those things started to break down and I wasn't really sure what was at the bottom. I feel like what UP saved for me is that like what was at the bottom is that church community and that you don't have to like feel super confident in, in what, what it is, like what's the correct belief about this particular thing or this particular idea. It's that you show up together and you support each other And from that springs the love of God. And from that springs, um, even if you still feel an uncertainty and doubt, the community and the support that you feel that I think um, springs forth a kind of security that allows you to sit with uncertainty in a way that is no longer uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And that is just so so special. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, I'm like trying not to cry (laughs) talking about it. Um, And so... I think that that just will forever like mean so much to me. Thank you. Well, I want to thank you both for being a part of our community these past um, seven years. And uh, uh, in a moment, you're going to hear them sing a song because the one way they've graced us is with their voices and their music. Um, And I have such love and gratitude for both of you. Um, And it feels like a love rooted in agape, um, in real agape of God's kind of love. And as you're saying that, Kendra, about what's at the base of that, I hope that at United Parish, we keep at the base of it this agape, this deep love and care of neighbor and those people we like and agree with and those people we don't necessarily like and agree with and how God's love is all a part of that. So I'm gonna turn it over to you all to sing here in just a second. And then we're gonna give you a blessing here a little bit later, but just from the bottom of my heart, thank you both and blessings on your way. Thanks everybody. We're gonna miss you. Yeah. upon you grace I wish for less of what you want and more of what you need I wish upon you an old life with a heart that stays young most of all I wish upon you love I wish upon you truth when all you feel sunsets will the moon begins to rise so even in the darkness you'll find the light you'll find the light you'll find the light you'll find the light I wish your ears that are quick to listen And that you're slow to use that tongue But most of all I wish upon you love Cause as the sun sets Well the moon begins to rise And even in the darkness you'll find the light You'll find the light Find the light. You find the light. Yes, even in the darkness, you find the light.
Greetings from California. I am Lissa Olbetter. In the early autumn of 2019, a few months before the pandemic began, I relocated to Paso Robles, California in anticipation of the birth of my first grandchild. Since then, through the technological wonders of Zoom and YouTube, I continue to worship with the United Parish with my granddaughter, Georgia, because she and I enjoy a sleepover every Saturday night. I quite literally wandered into the United Parish on a spring Sunday over 20 years ago, and I found a home among this congregation where the theological doors are wide open, and importantly, where my family members are welcome and celebrated in the unique and wonderful ways in which God has made each of them. Over these many years, the United Parish has given me friends that I hold so very dear and has also given me the great privilege of many life enriching experiences, such as teaching Sunday school. Many years ago for teens who have long since flown the nest and then for first graders who are now fledglings poised to do so. And singing in the choir to be in the choir loft when Susan opens all the stops and the sunlight shines through the stained glass. It's as if heaven has opened up in our sanctuary. I also derived great pleasure from washing dishes for the Thanksgiving meal we provide to the Brookline community each year and working with the visioning group to take a fresh look at what God had in mind for the United Parish. Even from afar, my life continues to be blessed by the wisdom of the growing Grands members, some of whom, by their own example, gave me the courage to relocate to Paso Robles to enjoy the great gift that grandchildren bring to life. The reason I remain part of this faith community is remarkably simple. And the opening two lines of the gospel song we often sing, Sweet, Sweet Spirit, sums it up. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place, and I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. There are sweet expressions on each face, and I know they feel the presence of the Lord. Indeed, without a doubt, I continue to be revived in countless ways when I leave the video service each week. For those of you who happened upon this website and are joining the United Parish for the first time, I hope you too feel the sweet, sweet spirit of this place and kindly ask you to fill in the online visitor card on the YouTube site. To those of you who are regular attenders, I take this opportunity to offer my sincerest thanks for the sustaining impact you have on my faith journey and invite you to give as generously as the sweet spirit lays on your heart to support the work and ministry of our United Parish. We thank you God, we thank you, God for this precious day. We are so glad that you joined us for worship today, uh, and we hope you'll join us again next Sunday when we'll hear from our Minister of Music, Susan DeSelms, about her, the way the music ministry here has rooted her in the past and also given her opportunities to reach into the future. As always, we want to highlight several of the good things going on in our parish's life throughout the week and this summer. Um, first of all, we do have a summer book read that is starting up on the 25th of July and also on Tuesdays of Rachel Held Evans' Inspired, Slaying Giants, Walking on Water, and Loving the Bible Again, which is exactly what it says it is about how to reacquaint and enjoy the Bible in new ways, in new and profound ways. Also, I just want to highlight that 
this summer, on August 1st, we are going to start welcoming the main location of the Brookline Food Pantry. You received an email about that this week. It's an exciting new move that we approved at our all-parish meeting last month. So just uh, stay alert about updates on that and how you can participate in this exciting new ministry among us. We are also um, still recruiting for church school teachers. This afternoon, um, weather permitting, there will be a info session on the front lawn. You can um, check out on Realm or send an email if the weather is a little iffy and need to know where that's going to be happening. Um, to get a little bit more information about what it would look like to be a church school teacher this year. And there will be another forum again on the 25th as well. And then we are also having a, um, another playground meetup on Saturday at our playground for our um, nursery and preschool families. If you'd like more information on that, you can reach out to our nursery supervisor, Jenna Bergquist, or to Lisa Malloy, who have been organizing these get-togethers. Also to say that we are in the process of hiring as we get ready for the summer, I mean for the fall. Um, we'll be hiring a sexton, a custodian, as we will be welcoming building users back into the building as well as our congregation. And also we're hiring for a new media producer. Our current producer, Jason, will be with us into September and is going to help us to transition to more of a live streaming model. And so we'll be hiring for someone for his position. So if you know any great candidates, please send them our way. Uh, you'll find the links in your weekly emails. Be sure to check out your emails. And as always, reach out to someone who you might normally see in church over the summer, but you haven't seen for a while, send them an email, a text, give them a phone call. Just let them know that you care about them and that you're thinking of them. I wish you a very good week, but for right now we have one more bit of holy business. So let us go into the business of blessing. I want to thank Kendra and Chad again for being a part of leading today's worship with scripture, with our holy conversation, with their song, and also just thank them for the last seven years of presence and ministry among us and the ways they have shared their lives with us and allowed us to share our lives with them. And we want to be sure to send you with a blessing on your way um, as you go off to Lindsborg, Kansas. And uh, one thing is I think this weekend, actually, that we're airing this worship, you're going to be hiking up in the New Hampshire woods, getting a little last taste of New, of New England. But hopefully next Sunday, the 18th, you may be able to join us in Zoom coffee hour just so people can greet you then. For now, we want to offer you a blessing. We want to encourage everyone at home to warm up your blessing hands and to hold them forth uh, to bless our good friends, Chad and Kendra. God, we give thanks for these two beautiful children of yours, Kendra and Chad, for the ways they have shared themselves, their song, their theological curiosity, their grounding in your kind of love, their passion for justice with us here these past seven years. God, we ask that you bless Chad and Kendra, that they might be a blessing, that you guide them to a new church home where they may continue to grow in your love and service. We pray for happiness and joy to be ahead of them, for wisdom and guidance to be beside them, for grace and truth to be behind them, pushing them onwards into your goodness. All this we pray, and in your one name and in your many names, God, let the people say, Amen. Amen. Go in peace, friends. Thank you. Thank you.